Man, man, what a day, bro. Jabril, Jabril, what a day. I mean, look, if I'm, if I'm gonna be real, dog, I, I've had this, um, I've had this feeling like I, I need to throw up all day. Um, mm. <laughs> there, there, there aren't words to, to adequate, adequately describe how how I feel and how yeah. so when I woke up actually right before I went to sleep I saw it mm -hmm. but it didn't hit me until the morning yeah. and um you know I posted something that was like podcast related and then um and then I uh I quickly I was like yo I gotta take this down mm -hmm. um and, and, it, and it saddened me because I realized in that moment just how numb how used to this sort of trauma I am hmm. as an American, as African American, as a Muslim, how used to this I've become. And and that that made me so sad. Yeah. I mean similar somebody told me about it late, late, late last night and um when I first heard it, I was like, Oh man, like like I may mean, God bless them or provide them martyrdom, provide them with Jannah, you know, kind of the typical sayings that come out of our the mouth of our Ummah, you know what I'm saying? And then um, when I woke up, I just saw some more information about it, and then more people were talking about it, and then I I really started to feel it, and I was like, man, just words aren't enough, and um, it really hit me when I found out that they were actually going to Juma. And a few days before this incident, I was listening to a brother, um, Sheikh. He was just talking on, uh, you know, on YouTube talking. He's like, "Man, a Juma is like another eat first. You feel me? Like you wear your best clothes, yeah. you clean up, you come in focused. So, like, it's supposed to be a beautiful and blessed day, but today did not feel like eat. Today felt like um, a dark day, and uh, you know, it's kind of even hard to." to talk about it definitely takes a lot of courage because it hasn't even been 24 hours yeah oh yeah I mean it's, it's, bro it's, <laughs> it, it was it was one of those things where this morning you know thinking about it I was just like bro like it's, it's just crazy right again it's happening again again but this time it felt different this time was it, different it, subhanAllah it was different yeah, no, I mean obviously it was, it was definitely different but this, it's not like this is the first no. attack on Muslims yeah. it really isn't or attack on a religious place, yeah. In you general, know, in general, in, in general. But this one, this one felt different because one, the the amount of people, yeah. I think, yeah, no. And then two, the fact that it was broadcasted, yeah. Oh Lie. my god, like my stomach is just, yeah. And um, the the fact that it, it, it could have been prevented. You know, in, in, in many different scenarios, you know. Um, so I, I think for, for anybody that's listening and, and for us, like, this has definitely been a very tough time just trying to wrap your head around what, what, is, what is happening to our, to our community. Yeah. What's happening to the Ummah? What's happening to just mankind, just humanity, just yeah. in general. Yeah. Um. You know, the reason why, you know, we're on here is because there are some things that need to be addressed that it, that is more internal to our community. And the things that, that, that have, have really been ticking me off that I'm seeing in our community and, and, and things that we aren't addressing that need to be addressed, the things that, you know, the, the vanity that I see in our community when it comes to our uh, the the community the vanity I see in our leadership when it comes to our community there's certain things that matter a lot more than the the mosque that we're building mm -hmm. you know any imam that had the audacity to ask for donations to build a mosque today shame on you I mean and not only that there's a false rhetoric floating around and that is if you don't talk about it then it's not real yeah you know and then that's that's how I kind of felt today I mean. Jabril texts me, he's like, Muhammad, we got to talk about this. I'm like, man, not today. You know what I mean? Like, not today. But alhamdulillah, like, uh, there was an imam who stepped up. 
who went against the grain and was like, hey, we have to talk about this. And then when I looked around at the measure that I was in for Jummah, nobody wanted to hear it. But he still did it. So that was very courageous for him. And then he gave me the courage to get on here and talk about it and then come meet up with you, Jabril, because if it wasn't for you, if it wasn't for him, if it wasn't for some other supporting people, I probably would not have done this because just like everybody else, I didn't want to talk about it and even face the realization that this is reality, you know? Look, and, and, and that's kind of where I want to get to, yeah. right? So when, when I went to Juma today, and this is, well, let me let me backtrack. Okay. In my community back at home, very small community, we've always had somebody at the door, but we're carrying like a stick or something. Yeah. What in the world am I going to do with a stick? And we've been talking about for years, oh, you know, we need to make sure that, especially once Trump got elected, we were like, we need to make sure that the person at the door is some has something that armed to arm himself with because what's going to happen? He's just the first person to go. Yeah. You know? So... So the bigger discussion that no one is talking about is the fact that we aren't we aren't teaching our our community leaders that we need to protect the people in the mosque. Yeah. We need to have security. We need to teach people how to shoot guns. Yeah. We need to like is that like just point blank like right to the point. Yes, we need to pray. And yes, we need to keep our faith alive. And we need to keep going to the mosque. Yes, nobody said we need to stop that. But the plain fact is we're going there unarmed. People know that. These terrorists know that. They're going to come there because that's what, they, they, that's what they're there to do. They're there to take out as many people as possible. And where do you do with that? The place where everybody's unarmed. And where's everybody unarmed? Right here and now. Masters, churches, synagogues, Absolutely. temples. Absolutely. Why do we... Absolutely. We put our we put our physical guard down, but mentally, all day today I'm thinking about that, and I and this is not just because of this incident. I've been thinking about stuff like that on a regular basis. Yeah. Look at the climate we're in. People think it's still gravy to go outside and try and pray pray outside on the sidewalk. Look at the climate we're in. Yeah. People are naive. Yep. They're being so naive. We have to protect ourselves. Yeah. At the end of the day, we all have to protect ourselves. And then um, for those that may not know what we're talking about, um, yesterday there was a deadly terrorist attack in New Zealand in the city of Christchurch. Two mosques were attacked during Juma, uh, Masjid al Nur and Linwood Masjid in New Zealand, the first terror attack in history um, said by the prime minister and uh it was a predetermined or premeditated attack. The guy was armed with heavy machinery and um, military grade weapons, and he recorded it live. Um, it was a white supremacist that went ahead and uh, put out the attack. 49 of our brothers and sisters, at least minimum, were killed, and at least 48 were severely injured at this time. So just kind of FYI for those that may not know what's going on. Yeah, and um, I just got a you know, a today was hard because I still went to Juma. You know, Jabril went to Juma. Alhamdulillah, and for all those individuals that went to Juma, uh, kudos. Uh, hopefully, it was safe for you. And for those that didn't, Alhamdulillah, I'm glad you made that uh, decision to keep yourself safe today. Like, there's no bashing or anything like that. I just hope that the message was reciprocated, and you kind of s- at least talked about the issue with your family. You know. But, you know, I can't say that because it just happened 24 hours, so it's kind of even hard to talk about you it. You want to know what's crazy, bro? What? I don't say this to be, like, mean or, or to immigrant Muslims, but people that immigrate here, people that who aren't native to this country, right? Okay. Look at African Americans and black or quote unquote black Muslims. Yeah. You look at the nation of Islam. The nation was teaching back when we had to arm ourselves and protect ourselves against you know, quote unquote the white devils, these white nationalists, these people that, that don't care whether we live or die. No. They they don't care. It was a game. Yeah, it's a it's a game for it them. A game for it's them. a game. This dude he went out hunting yeah. today. But but like 
we we whenever the nation is is mentioned in communities outside the black community, oh, they were extremists and yeah. oh, we don't side with that. Yeah. But bro, they were teaching us, yo, we gotta support and protect our communities. We gotta protect our women and children. Yeah. We're going in the mosque. We're going in the mosque like like blank. Yeah. So naive. Yeah. So naive to the fact that dog, anybody can run up on us at any point in time. Because you know what they say that they think is just no, Allah's gonna protect us, God's gonna protect us, which is true. Which is true. But think about it. What if our Prophet وسلم, was walking around unarmed during the battle saying, hey, God got me? And he wasn't fighting. Like, we have to fight. <laughs> we gotta fight. We gotta fight for his right. We that gotta is, fight for justice. We gotta protect ourselves at the end of the day. But let's not get it confused with we have to we have to retaliate with harm. Yeah. There's a difference. There's a difference, There's a difference between being proactive and 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 protecting yourself and yep. those around you, yep. and going out and trying to start something. Exactly. Don't get it twisted. We Don't need to protect. We need to protect the people that are going in the mosque. When you're in the mosque, your brain, your focus should be completely and and on nothing else besides Allah's point with the and the message that you're receiving at that point in time. Yeah. But how can you concentrate, especially when an incident like this happens, and then you then literally not even 24 hours later, you're in the same position. You're in the same exact position. You no, know, you bring up a good point because like when people because right now we pray almost everywhere we come to Jama, we pray at hotels, <laughs> we play at we pray at like maybe like a like a community center, whatever. But we never think about like an emergency, like like a plan, you know? Like the building catches on fire, somebody comes in and does something reckless. Like we never talk about that, you know? Like I've never, <laughs> I never heard any maps say, hey, look, if anything happens here while we're at Juma, there's in a, you know, a back door. Make sure you guys know about it. Here it is. I, I've never heard of that. And Good it's point. just making me realize that now, like, think about it. If you're in a building, if you're in a school, they have stuff like that. Even when you're in school, they have different trainings in different protocol when things happen. And that's an elementary school they teach us that, right? But it's like for us, when we come and we pray, we don't even have, we don't even have like a procedure that we can follow if something were to happen, you know? So I hope that now as a community, we can start thinking more proactively of how we can keep our children safe, how we keep our women safe, how we can keep our men safe. Because at the end, at the end of the day, who's gonna keep us safe? And um, Jabril had a great point earlier today. We pay taxes. So if we pay taxes, who gets compensated from our taxes? Police officers. Why don't we bring them into our community Bro, so, and have them protect us? So I went to Jamal today. I'm going to tell you the whole entire scenario. Yeah, I'm going to tell you my scenario too because there's definitely both the yeah, opposite. They're completely complete opposite. Opposites. So I go to Jamal today. I get there a little bit early and I see the... The man, the one that that manages the masjid and the house that oh, the president, the masjid, yeah, the, the the president rather. So I see him, and he's you know he's outside, he's looking around, like he's patrolling. And I go up to him like, "Hey, hey man, how you doing? Yada yada. Did you hear about what happened today?" And he was like, "Yeah, yeah, I heard, I heard." I was like, "So you know, like what 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 preparations do you have for today?" Yeah. He's like, "Oh, you know, we had a couple of brothers. They said that they may, um, they may." go on like a, a little route and and security and we're going we plan on getting cameras and the police we talked to police and they said that they're going to they're going to uh drive around for about 10 minutes and i was like brother so so who do we have on site like do we have police officers that can come on site he was like ah, you know we we talked to them but it's going to be a lot of money yeah. what so you uh, it, no specifically he goes it'll be 185 dollars. that's a lot of money while while every single Friday you're asking us to donate money so that we can get money for a three to five million dollar mosque, we don't need a three to five million dollar mosque. What we need is to make sure the people that are in the mosque currently are protected, that they're safe. In a hundred and a hundred eighty five dollars, bro, we literally have about two hundred people that come to Juma. If every single person donated five dollars, even if half the people donated five dollars, that's it. We'll be straight. We'll be straight. So it, it baffles me that for, as soon as I get there, that was the first encounter. Then when it comes to the kutba, the, the, the katib for the day, he addressed it. He, he, he made mention 
of what happened. But he never once gave any sort of um, talk to the people about how we need to how we need to uh, protect ourselves, protect the women, protect the children. All he talked about was we need to sit down with our children and talk to them about the dean. We need to pray more. We need to do this. It's like, bro, we get this. You that's a cookbook that you wrote literally two weeks ago, and then you decide that oh, I can I'll switch things here and there. No, we need something that is that we can put into action. Right away. We need to protect people po- point blank. There's like I don't have any other point for the rest of this podcast is so that we need to make sure that we get people strapped up, trained, yeah. or I'm sorry, trained, strapped up, yeah. and then able to protect ourselves. Yeah. Absolutely. Like it's just, it's just, it is wild because there was no mention of that. And at the end of the football, not, they didn't even say, oh, well, you know, because of the victims of this, of this tragedy, we want to take today's zakat and give it to them. They're still talking about the freaking building. Still talking about, oh, we need some money to build the mosque, build the mosque. You're not even trying to fix up the mosque that we're in. Man, we might not have anybody else left to go it, to the That's mosque. what I'm saying. An incident like that happened. Who cares about a mosque? I want my brother. I want my sister. I want my child back. Right. Nobody cares about the mosque. On the day, yeah. We have a, we have, we're in a musala. Yeah. A, 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 a very appropriate musala for the sizable for the size of the community. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Thank Allah. So, so there's vanity in the leadership that they care more about how we look than actually us being there yeah. and being protected and being safe, feeling safe when we go to pray. Yeah. They don't like they, they say they care, but some dude going on a, a, a little circle route around <laughs> around the perimeter premises yeah. is not going to make that big of a difference. If a dude decides to pull up with a semi-automatic or automatic rifle. But I bet you anything that uh, that one or two people that walk around with a little pistol will make a big difference. For sure. Because the guys are like, you know what? Oh, this community ain't the one. Exactly. You know what I mean? This community is not the they one. They pick ones because we're vulnerable. And we're vulnerable because we're ignorant. And we're ignorant because we're... What is, if you break down ignore, ignore it. You're, ig- you're ignoring the fact of the situation at hand. We live in an America right now where people are going around hunting. Point blank. And the person who is in charge does not care. Why? Because he endorses it. Hmm. Fact. That's fact. So on the other side, I went to I went to Jamont today and I had a different experience. Um I have to give a huge shout out to Crystal City, um, Marriott. Um, if you guys are local, please just make sure you guys leave a, a review to those guys. Just reach out, tell them thank you. I went to the Crystal City Marriott. Um, it's not a message, it's, it's a hotel, but we prayed on the, I think, like, second or third floor. And when I got there, I was surprised. There was three security guards waiting for us to get into Juma, all greeting us, wow. smiling. It's like, you know, oh, we're here today. It was an Asian brother, I think, and a Eritrean brother, and a martial it might have been an Ethiopian sister, all there just like proud and ready and then I had to thank them shook their hands like thank you like this means a lot more than, than you think and alhamdulillah we walked in and then the khatib was like look I had a lot of things that I want to talk about today I want to talk about the blessed month of Rajab how we should start fast and we're about you know T minus 58 days until Ramadan but I can't talk about that right now I need to talk about real time what's going on to our community he went straight into what happened and uh, I think it was brother, I think it was Ahmed or Adam. Big shout out to him because he was like, "Look, a lot of people don't want to hear this, but I gotta talk about it." And he talked about the scenario, and he was like, "He said I can't fathom to what happened. Like, we're not protecting ourselves as Muslims." And he's like, "Look, there's <laughs> what's better than a weak Muslim, a strong Muslim?" And he said, "Not your iman." Talking about your physical strength, we need to start getting stronger. We can't just be going to work getting money and you know try to climb up the corporate ladder the status ladders like we need to be physically strong because when we're physically strong and somebody tries to pull up on us and they see four or five giant dudes at the door they're like oh yeah this <laughs> these guys ain't gonna be messed with you know what i mean and that's true and i was so i was so happy to hear that because he's like look not just the men the women have to get physically strong the kids like we all have to be physically fit like we have to be able to protect ourselves and then even after we had the khutbah at the end 
um, I don't want to call it uh, Salat al it or something else, but we ended up praying for the people over in New Zealand. Yes, that's a, that's a Janaz, right? Yeah, I mean, I think he called it something else. Uh, oh, okay. Because Janaz is the body like there, you know? Mm hmm. Do you even most of the time when you do something the Janaz? No, because I prayed Janaz prayer at um, Dar Hijra. There's, okay. There was nobody. It was just for somebody he that had called passed. It, he called it something else specifically. Yeah? yeah. Okay. So if you guys cool. know, reach out to me. I, I, I totally forgot. Yeah, yeah, help us out with that. And then he gave, an, uh, he gave a hadith. Of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He Sallallahu. said there's going to be a time Where the Ummah or mankind Is going to all be coming to the table Like the Sufra It's going to be He gave an image of like a table full of food And everybody gathering around And kind of figuring out ways of How they're going to devour the food And at that point they're very vulnerable And he was saying that That's almost in the likes of People getting together right now saying, like, how can we take over the world? You're like, hey, look, I'm going to get a piece of this Oma. You get a piece of this Oma for this price, you know? And one of the Sahabas was like, you know, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, like, how is that going to happen? We're strong people. Is it because that we're low in numbers? He's like, no, we're going to be mighty in numbers. But we're just going to be, ha we're just going to be so weak. We're going to have no substance. You know, he's like, uh, the picture that the, the Khatib kind of Im, uh, put image in head was like, it's like a water bottle full of soap. Say half the water bottle's full and you kind of put the soap on the top of it and you shake it. Once you shake it, the whole water bottle's going to be full, right? But once you open up and you blow those bubbles off, what's left? Still half that water. And then that's the image he gave of the Muslims. Mashallah, in numbers, you shake that thing up, man, we have, we have people, man. Mm -hmm. But then at the end of the day, when it comes to the believers, the people that's willing to stand, it's not gonna be many. The of people us. that want to do stuff willing besides do go something. on, go on social and post and, yeah. and 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 just talk, man. And that's why Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is gonna ask us, "Hey, remember that incident that happened? What did you do? What did you say? What What did you do afterwards that was going to actually change yeah. the course of the possibility of that happening the next time? Exactly. That's the most so important. You're yo, exactly real right talk. About you're exactly right about if you're listening to this. And you're able body, you need to go to the shooting range and learn how to shoot a gun. Point blank. Or hit the gym. Get physically strong. Like, you know what I mean? You if can you get as strong as you want, but a well, bullet's gonna take you out just like it's gonna well, take me out. And not everybody might not be comfortable with that, you know? So no, find out other com ways. comfortable. What do you mean? What do you mean comfortable? There is no that like we're we're so beyond comfort zones, it is like is ridiculous. We're beyond that. Well, they, well, let me rephrase it. They may not be ready to just jump into that. That's, that's right fine. Away. You know what I mean? That, that's that's, what I that's 100% fine. Yeah. But some somebody has to be ready. Somebody. Yeah, somebody. Because we call the, you know, we call the people heroes who, who take the bullets. But, like, bro, I, I, I pray that it doesn't have to come to that anymore. I know. Yeah. You know, I want the hero to still be alive. The hero, the one that saved us because he because he was ready, he was professionally trained, you know, or he made that call was like, hey, look, I need five police officers at every Juma. Exactly. That's you like know? that. Like th that should be our hero. That's being proactive right there. Exactly. Exactly. You know, I was telling Jabal, like, look, if you have a gathering of over 100 people at one time, you should have some sort of security measure, regardless of what you're doing, whether it's prayer playing a game, family gathering, you know? Like Id's <laughs> think about it, think about it. Yeah. We go to we go to Id all the time and never once do I re maybe once or twice do I remember like security. Oh no, but, we, but, no. But you, we definitely had security. But like yeah, yeah. I, I don't I never remember having security at Id. Yeah, no, we definitely had security. You know? And yeah. it's also being conscious of the community that you're in. Yes. We again we here and in other places where we is westernized societies, we have to understand the people that are in our communities. Understand the audience. Yeah. We don't live in in a country where everybody's happy go lucky about Muslims and immigrants. Yeah. Yeah. Listen to our president. Yeah. Trump is not he is not the genesis of all this. He is a symptom mm. of what white supremacy over hundreds and hundreds of years has Concocted. Good point. And he has risen to the top. And the best thing about Trump, he doesn't have a filter. So we already know. Yeah. We know what's up with him. The people are proud. Exactly. They, they said we do this for him. This dude, yeah, this dude basically pledged his allegiance to white supremacy and Trump. Like, really? I mean, he's done it before. It's not I me. Mean, this is facts. It, it's, I mean? been, this it, is, it's been done before. Yeah. He's so, so why? So why? 
like everybody's like, oh, white supremacy is bad. Well, no, no stuff. We know this. We're repeating the same stuff. But not only for us, for every walk of life. Like, yeah. For immigrants, for her Christians, for the LGBTQ, the LGBTQ community, you know, this is, they have no morals and they have, they have no mercy. Like, if you're not white and you believe, if you don't believe in what they're kind of their cause, they're coming after you. So it's not just a Muslim thing. It's not just a black thing. It's not just a, we all need to be cognizant of that and just be more protective of our community. Like, I, I want us to protect our community just in general. Mm-hmm. Like, who knows? Like, in that mosque, in the shooting, there could have been somebody in there that was just visiting and not even, like, Muslim, you know? Like, there's been mosques where, like, yeah. Christians, other people, faith just come in just l- and listen in. But that could have happened. Bro, we, end of the day, man, 49 people have lost their lives. And that's not even the end of the death toll. We don't know if there's more people who still, are in critical, critical condition and they're on the verge of losing their lives. We just don't know right now. Still, bodies still being removed from the mosque. Well, that, that's, you know, that, can't believe it. You know, times like these are the times where people kind of rally together. And we're seeing, you know, the interfaith um, dialogue and the communities kind of help one another out. And it's so, so greatly appreciated, you know, to our to our listeners as well. Like the people who um, who we know we've seen go on Instagram, go on Twitter and they say things or like the people that have reached out to me. I've had more non-Muslim friends reach out to me, um, you know, than than I expected, yeah. you know, just saying, hey, like, you know, like it's really really tragic what happened we we stand with you and the muslim community and, and we speak out against it yeah, no, um definitely so we definitely appreciate that from all of our friends who are non-muslims and for our muslim community for our for our friends for our, our teachers for our parents for our our, our siblings yeah, no, Th- this isn't a, a time you know this is definitely a time where we should be scared but we should also be mad be upset it's okay to be upset oh, yeah. Everybody's saying it's okay to be afraid and it's okay to be sad, but it's okay to be upset. Yeah. Be mad. Because that 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 rage, that anger inside will, will inshallah help you get to a solution. And do something, yeah. Make you proactive, as Muhammad said, make you proactive. What 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 do we do now? Mm-hmm. That's my question. If you're if you know that you go to a mosque, you go to a masjid where security isn't a priority, now is the time for you to speak up and say, Imam, what do we, what are we gonna do now? Exactly. What are we gonna do? When we have these halakas, when we have these classes at night, when we have, you know, Juma, right? What are we gonna do? Who who is it that we're gonna hire? And if we're not gonna hire anybody, are we gonna start offering firearm classes for our women and our men? Yeah. When are we going to do that? Because, you know, in, in other communities, right, mm-hmm. other communities, kids learn how to shoot, shoot at a very young age. Yep. My granddad took me and my cousin shooting at the gun range when I was like 14, 15. And I remember that to this day. And I really appreciate it. Granted, that was a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, my granddad texted me. He said he doesn't even go to the grocery store not strapped. Wow. He goes to the grocery store strapped. Why? Because he knows what climate we're in. Yeah. He said, once it gets dark and I'm outside, he's got it with him. Okay. He's got the hammer, point blank. This, this is a man that is in his 70s. Peaceful man. N- I'm not looking for trouble, but he knows there's trouble out there. Exactly. He said, I'm not looking for trouble, but if trouble find me, I'll make sure he don't find me again. Straight up. And that's just, he, he's being realistic. It's not like, oh man, he's a bad person. Some, a lot of people think because you got a gun, you're a bad person. Mm-hmm. People have families to protect. And a lot of people that even have guns, like, they're not showing off. You know what I mean? They're not going out there. No, this is, this is real life, man. So I wish the Muslim community would wake up and like Jabril had mentioned, like, let's do something, you know, like go up to your imams. And also another thing that you can do is ask the message, like, hey, where where's the money going? The the cat we had this week, like, where is it going? So, I even uh, you know, I told you, bro, I wasn't able to go to the measure that I usually go to, and I'm like, hey, bro, you know, can you drop some money in this cat? Because I'm just not around, you know, I'm going somewhere else. He's like, yeah, but let's put the money towards the more, victims, the victims, you know. Yeah. And I thought I about like, it. Yeah. I was like, man, that's a good point, especially because that certain message 
didn't even bring up the fact that the money was going to go towards that. Bro, like that's all they talk about was that was was building up a mosque that we don't need. That is wild. So I was like, you know, I was like, Jabra, I really do appreciate that because that's where the money should be going. The priorities in our communities are so like disconnected from reality. They're so disconnected. What's the, the the master is there to build community. We build community. It's not just about our spiritual lives. It's about every other aspect of our lives as well. Yeah. A master can run a school. A master should be able to run a, a school for children, right? You don't just teach children prayers. Like they gotta learn math. They gotta learn social studies. You can teach out of masters. The master is supposed to be the hub of your community. Absolutely. And our community is supposed to teach us how to protect ourselves. The one master that we go to when we go to Chit Shot, I really like that that master because not only does it double as a school, but they also teach the children how to defend themselves. They yes. teach Taekwondo, it might be uh, karate. I'm not, yes, I'm not sure karate. which one it is, karate. Yeah. They teach them how to defend themselves in the masjid. Yeah, that is awesome. That's awesome. In the masjid. The next step further is women self-defense classes. Yeah. The next step further is how to use pepper spray. Mm -hmm. The next step further is how to shoot a gun. Yeah. There is nothing wrong with that. We are Muslims. We we need to protect ourselves. Why is there this, this stigma that if we own guns, like you said, we're bad people? Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Like my man 50 said, get the strap. <laughs> get the strap. So, I mean... So, so there's there's oh, different things. Okay, cool. No, there's different things that you can do like right now. You know, if you're feeling angry, if you're feeling worried, and you have all that anger built up, use it for a positive outcome. So what you can do is donate. There's some individuals and organizations that's out there really doing their thing to help and make sure these brothers and sisters out of New Zealand get compensated and their families are taken care of. The first one that the first organization that we would like to highlight is the Penny Appeal. Go to www.pennyappeal.org on the front page they have the New Zealand mosque shooting donate <coughs> now support the victims and their families so shout out to Penny Appeal we do appreciate everything that they're doing also another um, organization that's helping out is Launch Good mm -hmm. um, yeah just pull you it got up it, yep. so go to www.launchgood.com slash project slash support Underscore four, underscore the, underscore families, underscore victims. Hey, look, 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 look. We'll, we'll, we'll get to it. the point. We'll put it on yeah, our links we'll, and we'll our Instagram our and our yeah, Twitter. While I was reading, I was like, man, this journey is actually not know that long. But uh, yeah. yeah, so those are two great organizations that are trusted. These are trusted yeah. sources that will make sure that these individuals get the money. Like yeah. these aren't like middlemen that's going to get a little cut. No, their job is to make sure that these people get those funds ASAP and the families are being taken care of. Yeah. So, you know, in your prayers and your in your duas, Absolutely. pray pray for these people, but also pray for for our community. Pray for solutions. Uh, yeah, pray not not only the solutions, but pray for the Ummah to come together and to wise up to yes. the 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 world that we're in right now. Yeah. For us to protect one another. For us to fight for one another, not just with our words, but physically. And fight for all of our brothers. Uh, you know, our Christian brothers, yeah, our Jewish brothers, our Sikh brothers. All you, you know, who believe, not only the Abrahamic religion, just our community, just in general. Even if somebody's atheist, protect them. Protect them. Protect all of us, because at the end of the day, nobody deserves to die just because somebody has a different thought process and uh, thinks that immigrants don't belong here. Mm -hmm. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Everybody's immigrant, bro. <laughs> so, um, well, I mean. I didn't land on Prince Rock. Prince Rock landed <laughs> on me. Landed on me. <laughs> oh, man. Um, yeah. And, and um, you know, if you don't have the funds to support, you have time. You yeah. know, send this podcast to somebody that may not know what's going on, right? Um, tell tell individuals. Talk to your imam. Talk to your imam. Talk to your parents about it. And, um because they really need to feel this. That is, that is important. You bring up a good point. Talk to your parents Talk about, your parents, exactly. about what, what's going on because a lot of times we try to internalize what's going on yep. and we only want to talk to our friends, but no. our friends don't really we know race, what's going on. Or we race to social media. Oh, yeah. yeah. How do you do that? I, talk to, I went home. I went on a long walk with my family. I was like, we got to talk about this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, this is serious. People are so quick to run to social media and throw stuff yeah. out there and see what sticks. You know? Nah, man. Talk to your parents because I'm yeah. sure they've been through something like this before from whatever country that they came from or even residing here in the U.S. So do that. Start at home first. You got yeah. anything else, bro? 
just look everybody please 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 be safe yeah. be aware be smart yeah. be proactive just that we, we can't we can't be sitting ducks anymore we we really can't for for, for far too long my community the african american people we we dealt with this white supremacy and you know our leaders told us we got to protect ourselves. We have to we have to protect our communities, protect our women, protect our children, because they will take it from us and not bat an eye. They won't leave an ounce of sleep. Because they come for us. Yeah, this is what they, this is what they have bred. This will put in a little bit of perspective. I was looking at a picture of a lynching party. This is when they used to they used to lynch somebody, and the whole like town would come and watch. The finest clothes. The yeah. kids would they, be smiling. They would dress up. Yeah, but they, but you gotta laughing. understand. You bring up a good point. The kids are sitting there smiling, right? You think these kids actually understand what's happening? Oh. No, but they grow up seeing this stuff and becomes normal for them. Yeah. They grow up seeing uh, uh, Native Americans being taunted. They grow up seeing Asian Americans put in internment camps. Calling people gooks, chinks, negroes. You and know what I'm saying? And they're thinking that their families are heroes. It's yeah. the it's the American way. That's not the American way. Or the, or it's the good old days. The good old it, it's when the country was great. Yeah. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You see how it all comes back. Yeah. So the point is, understand where we are. And and be cognizant of that. Absolutely. We have. I mean, we have a. a disease here in our own country yeah in other countries we're quick to we're quick to look at countries in the middle east in africa and call them barbarians and sickos and thinking that we're the clean ones we're the conscious ones you know what i'm saying no man we're worse off yeah. because we because we have no reason why this should be happening there's there there's enough money there's enough intelligence and there's enough power here where we should be able to prevent what's going on but instead we cower dude in other countries they're fighting against the government they're fighting for freedom here we fight against each other fight against each other for what because somebody just puts out a call because somebody says it's okay wow yeah man. all right let's 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 wrap yeah, this, let's up, bro. this thing up man um you know if there's anything that we said that was just inappropriate or you think that we could uh well or polished you, up a little bit yeah, or you didn't simply agree with that's fine reach out to us you know hit us up on instagram twitter you know where it's at if not then just search i'm not really gonna plug <laughs> yeah. it in right I mean, now i mean no plug it but plug it because we we want people to reach out we want to have yeah. this di this is an open that's dialogue that's we true. need we to wanna, talk that's true we that's, don't want people to internalize this we so need true. to talk like Good this point. is this is important Good so point. find us on all of our social media the young and muslim podcast you can just search it that way but if you're trying to find us on instagram or twitter it's young the letter n muslim so young and muslim um, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, just search the Young and Muslim Podcast, the Young and Muslim Podcast. Um, we're on Apple, iTunes, we're on SoundCloud, we're on Castbox. Basically, if you if you'll find us. Man, shout out to my uncle, man, Egypt, man, my boy Hamdi. He reached out to me. It was like, yo, are you guys gonna talk about this? I didn't tell you that. He made up WhatsApp, I swear. Like Wow, that's so crazy. you and your bro are gonna talk about it. It's important. I was like, man, that's <sighs> Man, I, he's in Egypt. Yo, he's and, talking about this. Yo, and and and, and I just I, I really I just I pray for the families. Yeah, absolutely. You know, First for the foremost, families, yeah. for the children that don't have parents, for the children that lost their lives way too soon, that won't won't grow up. I mean, won't be able to you know to extend their lives, have their own children. You know, may Allah grant them the highest rank in Jannah. Exactly. Um, and and. And, and I don't want people to romanticize this idea that, you know, dying a martyr is something that we should all want to do. Our goal, our, like I've heard people say this, like, oh, if I die as a martyr, I would be happy. We should be working towards a world of peace yep. where things like this do not happen, where, where, where things like this happen and we're outraged and we're just like so confused. There's no confusion. There's no confusion with this. I mean, the other side isn't confused. No, no, no. But, but, but understand what I'm saying, Mo. Yeah. We're in a world right now where this is normal. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, we're, so many of us are numb, and that's why this hurts so much because this penetrated, this penetrated us past that point of being numb. Hmm. You feel me? Hmm. Like, you couldn't be numb to this. Yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? Our goals as Muslim is 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 the religion of peace. So we should want to work towards that idea and towards that life where we don't have to worry about that. It's world peace. It's not just the Muslim exactly. Community. We're reaching for exactly. world for the, peace. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was a messenger for all people. Mankind. So if you listen to this and you're not a Muslim, this is not just for us. This is for everybody. You yeah. also need to protect yourself. Strap man. up. Got to, man. Learn. And even if you don't get a gun, at least know how to use one. That's And that's what I was trying to say earlier. At least know how to use one because... In the masjid, we should have them joints just somewhere in the closet because somebody come up, someone's had to operate a gun. See, that's the thing I was telling you, but we have no procedures. We have no emergency button that we can press and then... Bro, I don't even think it's a fire extinguisher in the mosque up the street. Dang. Isn't that crazy? That place catch on fire, we are done. Like, we are well... <laughs> oh, my. We're well done. Man. That that was that was a bad joke. Horrible play on words. All right. <sighs> All right, guys. So for the last 40 minutes, you've been listening to the Young Muslim Podcast. I'm Jabril Salam. This is Muhammad Hassan. And we greet you with the greens of peace. As-salam. Wa alaikum. As-salam.